with each book I've ever written, they always come to me in a different way. And sometimes I'm working through real life issues in my own life and, and just paying attention to the process of moving from the struggle uh, to um, the other side of that. And this book is so different. I, I was literally driving down Vine with my wife, Kim, and, and I was sort of daydreaming and reflecting and I suddenly heard this inner voice say to me, the warriors aren't ready for battle until they've come to know peace. And this is the way of the warrior. And the moment I heard that, I, I wasn't expecting it, I wasn't planning it, but the moment I heard it, I knew something had just erupted inside of my own soul and I immediately told my wife, Kim, I know what my next book is. I, I know what it's called, it's called The Way of the Warrior and I know what the first line of the book is and, and that's actually how I sent it out. I sent it to uh, my agent and they sent it to the publisher and, and all I had was the title The Way of the Warrior and the first line of the book. I knew it was an ancient path to inner peace. And I know there are a lot of things that inform that, and I think that's true for all of us. Our, our imagination is sort of the place where all of our thoughts and ideas and our experiences and our questions all come together. And, and so when I began to unwrap the book, uh, so much of the book came to me as a surprise. I, I cannot tell you I knew how the chapters would line themselves out. I found myself so oftentimes in this experience feeling as if I was receiving the book more than I was actually delivering it. And I didn't know how profoundly it would be about the inner journey. But I, I knew that it was about the big issues of life, that it was about why the world is always at war. Why is there so much violence? Why is there always some moment on the human landscape that horrifies us with what human beings can do? And, and I wanted to answer the question, how do you bring world peace? And the question was to me so significant because we will never know world peace until we have inner peace, that, that the world rages with war because there's a war that rages within us. And I think we keep trying to solve problems out there that are actually problems in here. I didn't use the language of the way of the warrior because I wanted to romanticize war. I, I, I hate war, I hate everything about it. I hate everything about humanity's most violent engagements. And, and, and here we're in the middle of, of global wars and always the rumors of wars. And at the same time, we have an endless number of school shootings where people just seem to somehow thoughtlessly and callously walk into public spaces that should be most safe and protected and, and open fire on students. And, and it's almost as if we're at war against innocence we're at war against peace. Everywhere we think peace should be assumed, everywhere we think peace should be secure, someone wants to disrupt and violate that peace. We don't need any more information to know that we're at war. We don't need any more information to know that the human heart is in turmoil, that there's a violence that's raging inside of us. But I don't know if we actually know how to find peace, how to find not only world peace, but inner peace. And that's why I wrote The Way of the Warrior. And and, and I, I think my publishers had a really honest concern. Do you choose to call something the way of the warrior when there's so much war and so much violence all around us? And I wanted to reclaim language for several reasons. You cannot write anything out of the context of the scriptures and not deal with the backdrop of war. I mean, the Old Testament especially is a continuous story of one conflict to uh, after another war, after another oppression, after another engagement, after another captivity, whether it's Egypt or Persia or Babylon or Rome, the story of Israel is a story of war. Sometimes they seem to be the initiators of war. There's wars against the, the Canaanites and the Philistines and the Moabites, and it seems like there are always these tribal conflicts taking place. And even the journey toward the Promised Land is a journey of conflict and war. So you can't escape the language and the backdrop of war in the scriptures. And because of that, I think we have a misunderstanding of God. We think that God is a God of war, that the God of the Bible is a God of war. But the reality is that we are a people of war and God has stepped into our story. God did not initiate the story of Abel and Cain, two brothers going to war against each other. God did not begin the bloodshed in the human story. 
But God stepped into the bloodshed of the human story. God stepped into the violence of the human story. God stepped into our war. And because of that, in a very real way, God has tainted his reputation by fighting for us. I think we need to understand that God is not a God of war, that we are humanity at war, that God is a God of peace, but he has stepped into our conflict and fights for us so that we can once again be a people of peace. So part of the, the artistry and poetry that informs the way of the warrior is my fascination with old Japanese films from The Seven Samurai to uh, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon to Hero. And, and in those narratives, you always have those, those old samurais who are teaching young samurais the, the disciplines of what it means to be a true warrior. Not a man of violence, but a man of peace. Not a person of violence, but a person of peace. But even as I was unwrapping the material, the way of the warrior, it so poignantly drove to Jesus. I don't know how a person could ever talk about bringing peace on earth and not talk about Jesus. It's to me not incidental that the most violent act in human history, the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, is the central moment that is humanity's greatest hope for peace. Jesus is the warrior of peace. It is in following Jesus that we discover the way of the warrior. So as we dive into each one of these codes and learn the way of the warrior, the path of the warrior, I want you to know that it is the path of Jesus that leads us to peace. Jesus himself is the Prince of Peace and he promises that he has come to bring peace on earth, but not the kind of peace that we know in the world, the kind of peace that only God can bring. Jesus comes to fight the battle that is raging within you, to bring peace within you. And through that peace that we find within ourselves, we are now able to become instruments of peace for the world that is at war. And that's why the book is called The Way of the Warrior. It's a story, a human story, where God is always pulling us toward peace and we are always fighting at war. It's a struggle and peace will not be found if it is not fought for. And that's the central message of The Way of the Warrior, that we must take this fight on, the fight for peace, the fight for world peace, the fight for peace on earth, the fight for inner peace. That's the message of the way of the warrior. That's the journey I want to take you on. And that's why I want to invite you on this particular journey, the journey of the way of the warrior, an ancient path to inner peace.